Lawyers used to let you clean up the mess Just down on my knees Thought I couldn't stand up on my own Turns out sometimes you're stronger alone In part one of our discussion of gaslighting, we talked about what gaslighting is in general and what the effects of gaslighting look like on a person that has been subjected to it. Now we're going to jump right into looking at some hallmarks of gaslighting and how the cult uses it for control. Remember, the purpose of gaslighting is to get you to doubt yourself so that someone else is the person that you look to for answers. He or she with the power creates your reality. They become your reality check, and you become detached from your own thoughts and feelings, replacing them with the thoughts and feelings provided to you by this person or organization that is your reality check. As we talk about this and how it was used by the cult, again, remember that these things were often seen in our families as well. These hallmarks might be seen in your mom, your dad, your siblings, friends, partners, workmates, etc. And you may also find that you too employ some of these hallmarks yourself, whether against others or even more likely internally against yourself, causing self-doubt. Today, we're going to talk about Hallmark number one, a person that is gaslighting you will deny that they ever said or did something, possibly even in the face of proof or evidence. Now, everybody can forget something, right? Uh, and we can all be reluctant to admit something at times, but we're talking about a pattern here, a pattern designed to make you feel like you're crazy or there's something wrong with you and your perspective. One of my favorite examples of this with Jehovah's Witnesses is the year 1975, the year that was predicted as the end of the world by the cult. There are audio recordings of that time and their catchphrase, stay alive till 75. There are writings in which they are praising people for selling everything and donating their money to watchtowers so that they could fully try to save people in such desperate times. They kept pointing to the year, and then 1976 happened, and 1977, the 1980s, and here we are now in the 2020s. Now, if you ask an active Jehovah's Witness about this, what are you going to get? Well, that didn't happen. Or some people got something in their head and ran with it, but that was all conjured up in their own heads. But Watchtower Tower never said that. Jehovah's people never said that. Even the Watchtower in 1976 said, and I quote from the Watchtower of July 15th, 1976, page 440. It may be that some who have been serving God have planned their lives according to a mistaken view of just what was to happen on a certain date or in a certain year. They may have, for this reason, put off or neglected things that they otherwise would have cared for. But they have missed the point of the Bible's warnings concerning the end of the system of things, thinking that Bible chronology reveals the specific date. <laughs> How presumptuous of you to listen to Jehovah's people, to listen to the governing body, to listen to Jehovah's Witnesses who are telling you that 1975 was going to be the end. It's your fault. Because the Bible says that, right, like we can't know the day or the hour. Isn't it, it's funny how, you know, and this is part of gaslighting, Jehovah's Witnesses like to speak out of both sides of their mouth, don't they? So that they can always kind of have some degree of plausible deniability. But basically, we've got to let you know, it was your fault. It was your fault that you sold everything and gave money to them and that they praised you for it and that they told you you should do so and that they told you it was the end of the world. That is your fault. And there was never really an apology for anything, was there? Or let's talk shunning. Do Jehovah's Witnesses shun people? I did an entire episode, it's number 66 if you want to listen, called The Truth About Disfellowshipping, with a deep dive into the cult's answer of that question on their JW.org website under their frequently asked questions. They will obfuscate and try to confuse the person asking the question about shunning. They will say things in legal proceedings about how, quote, you know, normal family relations remain after disfellowshipping. But yet there are thousands and thousands of us 
that are estranged from our families due to the shunning policies. Heck, one of the reasons I named this podcast Shunned is because they deny shunning and I wanted to put it in their face. They hate that term because they know they do it. They know it looks bad to the outside world. They know it's messed up. And instead of changing, they just deny that they do what we all know they do. Have you ever tried to talk to one of Jehovah's Witnesses about the Australian Royal Commission? How's that go? Maybe they deny that it happened altogether, which is always interesting, since their own leaders in the Australian branch were present, not to mention one of their governing body members, Jeffrey Jackson, who used spin and gaslighting during his own testimony to try to obfuscate in front of the judge and muddy the waters for his testimony. They might deny the video evidence of it, saying that the videos were altered in some way. It's always funny how Jehovah's Witnesses distrust videos on the outside, but they just trust implicitly anything that Watchtower puts in video format, because, of course, there's no lies there. They might dismiss the results of that inquiry by saying that all groups have problems with child sexual abuse, as though that somehow makes it better. They might use the universal excuse of, well, Jehovah's organization isn't perfect, an excuse that they would never allow for any other organization, would they? All in the service of protecting their billion-dollar religious organization over the children harmed under its purview. Or my favorite, why do you care so much about those people in some other country? You can just feel the love and unity in that question that has actually been asked by some. Anything, anything to avoid lending credence to what happened there, something that you know happens everywhere. Again, denying the evidence, denying the proof didn't happen. We could talk about the leader of the cult at the time, Joseph Rutherford, hoarding Adolf Hitler and singing his praises and the way that they were maneuvering and, and how that likely ended up hurting his own people, Jehovah's Witnesses, during the Holocaust, not to mention the horrible things that he said about the Jewish people. We could talk about how Watchtower was affiliated with the United Nations and how they dropped that affiliation once they were caught. We could talk about how they believe something one day, then get new light, and immediately believe whatever they're told to believe, whether they truly believe it or not, getting excited about that new belief. Look at how many brothers today are rocking beards and loving it and acting like it was some blessing from God that they can do it now, instead of looking at why they were ever denied the right to do so in the first place by a group of leadership that admitted that their restrictions were never biblical. It's amazing how you can gaslight someone into being excited to be allowed to do something that they should have always been allowed to do without even being mad about it. That really takes some time in separating someone from their own feelings and replacing them with yours, so they can't even be mad. Heck, after they announced that men could now have beards, uh, they actually talked about how any that might feel vindicated by the change and uh, would maybe not want to talk about their feelings because they could be guilty of causing divisions in the congregations if they brought up how, you know, hey, I've always thought that we should be allowed to have beards. What the heck? Those people or those Jehovah's Witnesses were immediately gaslit in the congregation to shut their own feelings down as though they were dangerous in some way. Jehovah's Witnesses and the governing body know how to control you. Can you see how this hallmark of gaslighting is designed to make you doubt yourself? You're being told that what you see and hear isn't what you saw or heard. And when everyone around you is getting that same message and everyone is starting to doubt themselves, you're not going to speak up. If you do, you're going to find others living in denial like good Jehovah's Witnesses, and you're going to shut yourself down because you must be the one seeing things wrong. Maybe you saw things denied personally in your life. Uh, maybe it was a parent telling you, you don't really feel that way. Maybe something happened to you and nobody believed you. Or maybe there was some revisionist history later down the road 
that what you know happened never happened. Feel free to share some of your own experiences or maybe other ways that you see Jehovah's Witnesses as an organization deny that they ever said or did something, perhaps even in the face of proof. Next time, we're going to get super personal and talk about one of the most damaging hallmarks of gaslighting, one that happens externally but really gets internalized, and then that can actually get in the way of our happiness in day-to-day -day life. If you have an idea for something you'd like to see discussed, go to shunpodcast.com and submit it to the contact page. If you're struggling to move past the cult of Jehovah's Witnesses and the impacts on your life, I work with many individuals daily in my cult recovery coaching practice. I'm also working hard to bring new resources to the XJW community through efforts to lift up individuals financially through job opportunities, marketing help for business ideas, and networking opportunities as well. So go to xjwhelp.com, that's exjwhelp.com, to find help and also to find opportunities to help others by supporting these efforts individually. You can get help, and then you can also help others there. You can also help support what I do financially by contributing to the Patreon at patreon.com slash shunned. Uh, in 2023, saw Patreon support drop by 55%. Um, and so, uh, you know, all of this takes time, energy, and it takes money. I spent money on a lot of the equipment and parts and the services and the maintenance and things that you see before you. So, uh, goodness, just the storage that I buy for all of these videos and all of this audio content. So if it's, if it's ever taken down someday, I can put it all right back up. That costs money too. So anyway... If you are so inclined, it is always appreciated at any level if you can uh, donate to the Patreon. And hopefully soon we're going to have some new things uh, there as well that you might be interested in uh, regarding the Uprising Project and getting going on bringing some of these different employment and marketing opportunities into the community. So stay tuned. But until the next episode, love yourself and others, do no harm, and go be happy.